We just showed a, a Sports Center spot uh, moments ago here of you with uh, Christy Martin, mm -hmm. the boxer, <clears throat> and you having some sort of love affair with her, if you will, from the Sports Center days. Think of it as a docudrama. <laughs> It's amazing. I'm out of it for now. Um, it being ESPN for, geez, now 15 years, and I still get people thinking I'm on sports. Oh, every you day. and me both. You, you and get me that both. all the time. Oh, oh, right? Still, still. You know, what was I'm, the last Sports Center you did? Late 2001. So that's 17 Cause, years. Because I know towards the end of my tenure there, you were the voice of ESPN Radio Baseball and yeah. doing some. I did the some TV fights, and, right, you know, right. yeah. But well, the fights, too. <clears throat> I took over for you when you stepped away from the Sports Center fight. Ah. I did the Sports Centers after you are like, okay, I'm done with that. Been there, done that. I stepped in, and I was a little disappointed, I'll be very honest with you, because they stopped the, uh, the you must wear a tuxedo for the Sports Center. Hits. God, I hated that. <laughs> I wanted it. Oh, I'm like, what do you, you mean know, I don't get to wear a tuxedo on ESPN? You know, I, I, I felt like a valet. It was like, <laughs> come on, this is a fight. <laughs> but uh, the last fight I did yeah. was uh, Tyson Holyfield and the bite. And I had wanted out for a long time. And so on this night, Tyson famously takes a chunk out of Holyfield's ear. And I looked into the camera. The last words I uttered in covering a fight for ESPN. Vander Holyfield and a portion of his right ear were rushed to the hospital tonight <laughs> in separate cars. <laughs> it's true. And that was it back to you in the studio? That's it? Good, thank you. <laughs> good night. That's a mic drop. That's a walk off. That was it. Thank and then you and good night. And all holy heck had broken loose in Vegas, right? When you walk Oh, off this is a, summing up the entire evening. That was it. Oh, uh, that, yeah, then the people and then, were and then rioting you went into in the, the streets. And I, you know, I, again, I had wanted it off for about a year because I saw the, the future of the sport and the horizon was flat. Um, and I had gone to our boss, Howard Katz, God bless him. Mm -hmm. I said, Howard, I can't do this anymore. He said, give me one more year. We will find a substitute for you. That's, by the way, I raised my right hand. Thank that was you, me. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Because I wanted to devote my time to baseball. Yeah. I felt like boxing had run its course. Mm -hmm. And I think history shows that it did. Occasionally there is a good fight now, but it is not uh, on the caliber of those days. Sure. So on the Monday morning after a portion of his right ear were rushed to the hospital in separate cars, <laughs> I walk into Howard's office in Bristol. And he said, don't say another word. You are free of your burden. <laughs> On to baseball. I said, thank you. And then I did Holofield Moore too. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, the fight where Henry Akinwande had to uh, cancel because he had a case of hepatitis. So that's what you missed, Charlie. W w it turned You're out seer. Akinwande was dyslexic and he couldn't spell his name. <laughs> that's probably true. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.